Hi, I'm Michelle from Tell Much Sleep Over Blooms. Today I want to show you how to make basic flower centres using fringing techniques. It's a basic technique, but you can apply it in so many different ways. I've used the same technique to make all of these flowers. You can make peony centres, you can make clematis, you can make a coral charm peony, and it's all the same basic method. You just need to create this basic fringe centre and then you can apply it in all sorts of different ways. So it's a really useful tool to have to get started. So first of all you're going to need your materials. You're going to need some wire, this is 16 gauge paper covered and I've cut it down to about half its original length just because I only want the short flower. You're going to need your scissors, I'd say some detail scissors. You want a little pot of glue and a cocktail stick and of course your crepe paper. I've created a video which I'll link here that you can have a look at for more details on all the materials and where to buy them as well. So the first thing you want to do is take a section of your crepe paper. So this is the German crepe paper from Leah Griffith. So with my scissors I just want to cut into the paper here. I'm going to take about two inches. I'm just going to cut all the way across. It doesn't need to be perfect, it doesn't really matter if it's not a straight line, just as long as it's approximate. Okay, so you have your strip of paper now. Then I want to stretch it all the way out. Crepe paper has these lines within it which make it easy to stretch and that allows you to shape your petals. But for this case, we actually want that to be fully stretched out because we don't want them to be moving around and stretching. So take the crepe paper in between both thumbs, hold it tight. See how I'm holding it there, and then just pull. And don't worry too much, you can stretch that all the way out. I'm, I'm gripping that quite tight. You can totally do that, it won't rip. Assuming you've got good quality crepe paper. <laughs> and then I'm just going to fold that over on itself. So that's just in half once, and then I'm going to do the same again. You don't have to do this step, but it just makes life a lot easier. So that's now folded into four. Uh, and then I'm going to do it once more just to make it manageable. So for the type of flower that I want, I only actually want a small centre. So I'm going to take my scissors and then I'm going to cut that in half again. So that's going to be about an inch now. You can play with this and create different depths and thicknesses depending on what sort of flower you're going to make. But the basic principle is the same. Now if I was going to do this for something like a peony, uh, like one of these ones in the background here, that I want a quite a big centre for, I'd probably keep this whole strip. But just to make it more manageable to show you, I'm going to cut it down smaller. So I've just folded that in half again and I'm just going to cut through that and put the other half to one side. So now I have my strip of crepe paper, it's about an inch tall by, it's probably about 10 inches roughly, maybe a bit longer. And I just want to make sure that's stretched all the way out. You can see up this end here, the very edge piece never quite stretches all the way, so I'm just going to cut that off just to make life easier. And also, if you've got a keen eye, you'll see that that is not actually the same distance all the way along. That really doesn't matter. If you want, you can neaten it up, but it doesn't matter. So, okay, now I just want to take that and fold it in half once and again twice. Now, see, I'm keeping the straight edge at the bottom lined up just to make my life easier. And there, that's where you can see the difference. So that's got a smaller piece and a bigger piece. And that's why I say it doesn't matter because you can just trim it at that stage to be more or less equal. And, it, and then it doesn't matter at all. So when you're holding it, the trick is I have two fingers here and here and then a thumb and a finger as well just to hold it tight. I'm actually gripping that quite tight right now. And that just holds it all in place and stops it moving around. Then you want to slide under here, you'll see there's, you can see the different layers, there's one, two, three, four, and in between layers two and three, where the fold is, you see that hole there? I'm going to take my scissors in there, this is why these sort of detail scissors are best, and I'm going to trim that to about this point here. So I've got maybe half a centimetre, just under a centimetre. There's no exact science, it depends on how you prefer to work and you can just play with different techniques. But that's that's the start of my cut. So I've done that at one end and I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do that on this other end as well, which is between piece one and two. Three and four are already cut because they're the ends. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is continue the cuts all the way along. So I'd say start at one end and you want to just 
make sure you're getting all four pieces at once hold it really tight and just cut and you just want to keep going like that you can do it in smaller pieces like that or you can do it in one go depending how confident you feel the smaller the details the finer the cuts um, the more delicate your fringe will look when you're finished but it depends on the sort of flower and not all flowers actually call for a delicate fringe and I find this technique of folding it over just makes your life a lot easier because it's actually easier to work with thicker paper. When you only have a single sheet, it's, it's very difficult to hold it still. Um, it's just quite flimsy, especially when it's stretched out. So this just makes life easier. And as you get better at it, you'll definitely speed up. I'm going slow now, I can go a lot faster. I could not when I first started. So obviously the more you do, the more you practice, the better you'll get. And then you'll get to this end here and they probably will have moved a little bit. So rather than struggling with it, just unfold it for that piece because it'll just make it easier for you. So you can see here I've got my fringes and then here there's, a, there's one chunk that's not being cut so I'm just going to go back in and trim that. And then I just run my fingers along just to check that everything is about the right thickness. Some might seem a bit thick, like that one there is quite thick. So I'm just going to trim that one. And don't worry about your lines being straight because I'm going to show you how to neaten those up in a minute. Okay, so there's my fringe. Now, it depends what sort of flower you want to make, but you could just take this and start to wrap it around as it is. And you, you'd get an interesting flower, it would definitely be okay. But to make it more realistic, you want these to look more delicate. So I'm going to twist every single one of these, which sounds scary and can take a very long time, but don't worry too much about it. You can definitely speed it up. So if you're just going to do one or two, you just grab the end view and you take it between these two fingers, your thumb and your finger, and you just want to roll it almost. It's hard to show the technique, but I'm just rubbing it backwards and forwards, basically, like rolling it between the two fingers. It's actually more difficult to get one or two of the fringe pieces than it is to get a few. So you can see there, I've just rolled those to make a more, more of a point. What I'm now going to do is show you how to speed it up. So I'm just going to grab a section and I'm just folding that in on itself and then hold it with this thumb. And then with this hand, I'm just going to grip them all together, almost like I'm pinching them. And I just roll them together as a group. Do that a few times back and forwards, just make sure you've got them all. When you unroll it, you can see it's got them all just the same as the first few. So it just speeds things up for you and also saves your fingers a little bit. <laughs> so I'm going to do that again. I've got a, a section, I'm going to layer them up and then twist. This is probably the only stage you'll find that your crepe paper gets a bit fragile, so do be careful not to tear the two pieces. But I will show you in a minute what happens if you do, it's not the end of the world. And you'll see there, there's one piece I've missed, so you can just go back in and twist that one piece. And this is what I'm saying, it's actually quite hard to grip a single piece on its own, so if you can't do it, just grab a few either side. Even if you've already twisted those, you can do them again, it won't matter. And this doesn't need to be perfect because, you know, flowers are all different. No flower in nature is the same as one another, so actually it's better if they're slightly different. Okay, so that is my twisted paper. So you can see now that looks so much better than we had just with the fringe cut. Just by adding that twisted detail, it just makes it a lot more realistic. So if, let's say you accidentally are a bit too heavy handed and you rip it, I'm just gonna show you what you do. So let's say that this we rip this bit here, okay, by accident, and we now have two pieces. That's absolutely fine, we can just glue it on separately. <laughs> so please don't panic if you do that. So now we're gonna take our wire and you want a piece of crepe paper to go over the end. So I'm gonna use this other part of the strip that we stretched. And you want to cut a square, it doesn't have to be exact, which is about one and a half to two centimeters. And then you take your glue. So this is the tacky glue, which I've decanted into a pot. Don't forget to check out the tutorial on your toolbox if, you, if you've not got your glue sorted yet. And I'm just gonna spread that over the paper. And then I take the end of my wire and lay it onto there. I tend to do it at an angle just because it makes it easier to wrap the top of the wire. And then you fold over the top corner and then the sides and roll it into itself just to make sure it's all covered. 
Now the only real purpose of this is just to hide the green wire so don't worry about it looking perfect because you're probably not going to see a lot of it. And then we're going to add glue onto our fringe. Now I tend to do a few pieces at a time because the glue works best when it's had a little bit of time to set. So I'm just going to dab this onto this end here. You don't need to do a strip all the way along, just a few bits like that will be fine. Just make sure you get the very end pieces. So you need to line it up so that the top of the wire where you put your paper covering lines up with the bottom of the cut in your paper. So I'm going to lie it here and that's where my fringing starts. And then if you just lie it into the glue it'll pick up the paper anyway. Wrap that around and then all you need to do, hold the end of your paper, pull it tight and roll with your other hand. So my left hand here is pulling it tight my right hand is rotating but you need to make sure to pull this tight otherwise it won't stay in place so try and line up the bottom of your paper as you're rolling it and you can use your finger underneath just to press it in place and make sure that the glue is sticking as well um, it doesn't need to be perfect at all in fact it's probably better if it's not and then I'm just going to make sure that this end sticks down properly and just give that a squeeze to make sure it's all tight and you can see that's the start and then I'm just going to start again with this piece and do the exact same thing so I'm going to line up here which is where my fringe starts with where the fringe starts on this piece and then because this is a longer piece I'm going to hold it about halfway along just to make sure I've got a good grip pulling on that tight and then I'm going to hold on to this other end now and roll again. I'm just going to keep rolling that. Don't worry about those loose bits sticking out, they don't matter too much. And then I'm just going to squeeze the ends just to fix that in place. And there you have the centre of your flower and you can fluff that out. The more you fluff it, the wider it will look. So if you wanted a bigger flower centre, you could do that. Or you could actually do it really tight, just take it between your fingers like that. So if you're creating something like a daisy and you want quite a compacted centre, that's great for that as well. And it depends what sort of look you're going for. So something like a peony where you want a more open centre like this, you can fluff it out loads. Or you can just do it more controlled like these ones. It really depends on the style of the flower, but the technique is the same for all of them. So once you've got that practiced, you can just keep making all different sorts of flowers from it. And what I would do with this, I would just keep going. So I'd keep taking more strips of paper, and I would just keep cutting, and then keep wrapping, and going and going and going until I get the size that I want. But if you want a big one, just fluff it out a bit, because you won't need to use as much paper as you think you will. Because already that's looking a lot bigger than before. Another trick that I've found which really helps with your centres is to add a bit of colour to them as well. So this is just white crepe paper and I've put a green tinge to that using alcohol inks. And that's great if you're using like a white flower that's got a bit of a green tinge to it but you don't want the flower colour to be exactly the same as the centre colour. Same here with this clematis. So I've actually used two colours. There's like a yellowy colour and then I've added some purple dye on the outside pieces. Exactly the same technique, I've just used two different colours on there. Hopefully that should get you started with making fringe centres for your flowers. It's a really good way to get started with paper flowers and it's so easy to apply to all sorts of different flowers too. If you give them a try then why not share the photos on Instagram, I'd love to see how you get on. Just be sure to tag me and use the hashtag Tarmuchsheet Paper Blooms. Don't forget to hit the like button below and I'd love it if you could subscribe while you're there too. Tarmuchsheet for being here to celebrate the special moments with me.